Hey everybody. Today we're talking about matrices in R. How to create them, how to refer to them, how to get some summary information about the rows and columns, and how to do some basic operations on them. I've pulled up the basic help file with question mark matrix. It lets you know about the basic commands for creating a matrix, telling if something is a matrix, and changing something to a matrix. Let's get into some of the details here. Fundamentally, a matrix in R is just a vector with an additional attribute, the attribute of dimensions. So let's start with a vector, let's call it x, and let's just get the numbers 1 to 12. So now I want to make a, mat a matrix, which I'll call M, and I'm going to use the command matrix to let R know that I want to build one. First, I'm going to say the name of the vector that I want to make the matrix out of, so I want to take the numbers 1 to 12. And then I just need to let R know um, what sort of shape to make the matrix. The simplest way to do this is with n row um, equals, and then just tell it the number of rows you want. So let's take three rows. There we go. So we have a three by four matrix. Notice the rows are labeled one comma, the columns are labeled um, comma one, comma two, etc. I'll say more about that in just a minute. If I try and do a number of rows that isn't compatible with the vector, I'm going to get an error number. That makes sense. The length of the vector here is 12. I can't fill out um, a matrix with five rows that, with that vector. Um, let's see here. I could have done this by column as well. So n call equals 4. That would do it. Notice that the um, vector x, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, filled into this matrix vertically. So it went by column. We can ask R to do it by row instead. So let's go to this previous command, and the command we want to add, the argument we want to add, is by row equals true or by row equals t. And now you can see the numbers have filled in horizontally. So that's helpful. I said that a matrix in R was just a vector with some with this additional attribute. We can see that additional attribute with dim, and you can see that M here has a, is a three by four matrix, three rows, four columns. Let's see here. The next thing we should talk about is that we can take this vector X, which of course is just the numbers one to 12, and create a matrix with that by giving it the dimension, dimensions attribute. So the command here is similar, it's dim of x, and we're going to assign it to be, um, let's make this a 4 by 3 matrix, how about? So now when we ask R to print out x, we see those same numbers printed out as a 4 by 3 matrix. You can also build matrices with the R bind and C bind commands, I'm not going to go into that right here. Um, oftentimes we want to refer to specific entries in a matrix. And we do that with a hard bracket. Let's, um, let's work with M a little bit more, and let's pull out the value from the second row and the third column. So M is the object I want. I want the second row and third column. So it's um, just row, comma, column inside the bracket, and of course that's 7 right there. You don't have to just give it one value. For instance, if we want columns um, not just two, not just column three, let's say we want column three and four, or rows, um, how about one to two and columns two to four, we can get submatrices this way. This is suggestive um, of what this notation is meaning. So this is all the entries with the and the first column, all the entries in the second column, and so on first row, all the entries. And we can use that notation when we subset matrices. So for instance, if I leave the second part here blank, when I do M bracket one to two comma, I'm gonna get all four columns. So that's sometimes useful. We can modify elements in our matrix um, much the same way. So if I wanna take, um, let's say, let's take this three. So first row, third column, and let's make that a, uh, a negative three. So I want to take the first row and the third column in this matrix, and I want to make it a negative 3. So I'm just going to assign the new value to that. You can see that that worked. The next thing that we might want to do is to make these um, row and column names a little bit more user-friendly, a little bit more human. 
So the command we might want there is um, row names or column names. So let's do row names of m, and we're going to give it a character vector. So how about, let's go simple, let's just go r1, r2, and r3. And now if we print out m, we can see that we've got better row names. The command for changing the column names is, guess what, column names. So um, now we can subset this matrix according to the names as well. So I could do R1, comma, let's just get all of them. Let's get the full first row. So I have referred to the first row by its name, R1. Great. Um, we can get some summary information um, on these rows and columns with commands like row sums of this matrix. And you can see the first row has sum of four, one plus two minus three plus four. The second row has sum 26 and so on. Of course, there's a column sums command, call sums. There that is. There's also row means and column means. So let's just do one of those. There's the means of the four different columns. Fantastic. Most operations, I shouldn't say most, operations on matrices by, fault, by default are done position-wise. So um, let's see here. We have this matrix M and the matrix X was um, four. So M is three by four and X is four by three. So um, let's get, how about M2? Let's subset this. Basically, I'm trying to get two dimension, two vector, two matrices of the same dimension. So um, let's have one to three and one to three. And we'll do the same thing with X. So now we have just what I said I wanted. Two matrices that are both three by three. So we can add these and it'll add corresponding entries. And of course we can subtract them. Um, we could also multiply one of these matrices by a scalar, by the way, just by a number. So that'll work regardless of the size of the matrix. It's taking that number two and multiplying every entry in the matrix by that number. Um, one thing to be aware of is if you multiply M2 times X2, so um, X2 is here and M2 is here. It's actually multiplying component wise, one times one, two times five, negative three times nine, and so on. This isn't matrix multiplication. This is just uh, sort of simple minded position by position multiplication. What's going on here, of course, is that R is treating these matrices just as vectors with that additional attribute. So that's reflected here. Same thing with division. If we want to get an actual matrix multiplication in here, we have to use slightly different notation. It's paren uh, percent sign star percent sign. And of course, in order for this matrix multiplication to work, the matrices that you're multiplying have to have interior dimensions that match up. So the number of columns in the first matrix has to equal the number of rows in the second. Let's see here, two other commands that are probably worth knowing if you're doing matrix operations in R and wanting to do linear algebra type stuff. First is the transpose. So we can get the transpose of, let's say, M2 with T parentheses. And you can see it's interchanged the rows and the columns. And while it's doing that, it's also inter interchanged the names. So the names of the rows here um, have become the names of the columns here. We can also get a matrix inverse with the solve command. So um, solve M2 will give a matrix inverse. If you have a singular matrix, you'll just throw an error right there. Obviously, there's a lot more linear algebra that you can do. R has a number of built-in packages. Um, this is the, the most fundamental stuff. I hope it gets you started. 